Kane and Lutheran in the white and green. Back to you, Oya Kale in the solid black. And the renegade man starting off with that long front kick just to find his range. Oh, nice shot there from the renegade man. Lotharan having to reset a little here. Looking very calm and composed though. Two very different body types from the featherweight division here, Dan. Yeah, you don't see someone quite that stocky usually in the featherweight division. Got to believe that Oyakel is going to have a uh, bit of a reach advantage with the arms and the legs here. Let's see if he can put that to good use against Lockeren. Lockeren's brother actually fighting on the regional circuit tomorrow night. So another guy from a fighting family. Both guys very hotly tipped prospects, as is Oyakel here in the UK. There's a solid shot. Lochran, of course, fighting out of Tyrone Island, but training out of the legendary Team Cowbon in England. Liverpool just down the road from here. I've got to believe a lot of the crowd support will be on Lochran's side. Nice kick to the thigh there. And it looks like he's slowly setting into his rhythm now. Back to is going to have to keep that pressure up. Keep making him reset. Beautiful catch of the kick and a takedown. And that's the sort of wrestling that you expect from someone with that body shape. And straight into side control, you know, just beautifully timed, caught the kick in the side control. Plenty of time on the clock. It's going to be interesting to see what he does from here. So again, you know, with that compact, powerful physique, you know, expect to see him try and, you know, utilize the power he can generate from short spaces and uh, go for the ground and pound here. Side control, not the be best position to do that from. So perhaps look to transition into the mount here. You know, side control is this really interesting position in MMA where it's really dominant in no-gi grappling and really not so much because when you try and strike from this position, you create too much space with your hips and your opponent's able to get the legs back on the inside and get something defensive. So usually from here, you're going to try and transition into the mount, look to open up the back or try and get into uh, some sort of submission, usually a head and arm or a kimura or something. But interestingly so far, Lovren hasn't really done much with this. You know, we speak about the judges, you know, the judges' criteria, where it used to be, you know, controlling on the ground was, was scored really highly. It's not anymore. If you take someone down, you don't do anything with it. It's not really going to score. So, you know, this is a great position for uh, Lovren, and he should try and do something with it. You know, uh, the Afghan Wolf able to get back into sort of almost into a into a full guard position here, and Lockhart's really kind of lost that dominant side control he had and eaten some damage from on top. Yeah, absolutely. Or you can firing these elbows off here, and you know it, it's on Lockhart from this point to uh, score in terms of either effective grappling or effective striking, and that means going for submission attempts and landing those impactful shots. Looking to take the back here, though, this is much more positive from Lockhart. Yeah, it's you know a beautiful transition there, and it, it's almost a little bit strange how he how he timed that. He didn't really do much. He almost allowed his, his opponent to get back. Well, he did allow his opponent to get back to full guard, and then as soon as he tried to do anything. He immediately passed, got to the back, and he's in a quite a strong position here. He needs to be very careful about his opponent trying to shrug him over the top here. So you see this position is a classic position to defend the standing back take, but you see how Lock Lockren's got his legs locked here. Those short, compact legs is going to reduce the chance of slipping off the top rule. So in the first round, which is really significant when you're grappling here, he feels like he's a little bit too high, so he switches back down to this body lock position here he tries to use his leg to drag his opponent's legs away you know really really composed grappling here again using that powerful build to pick his opponent up this time in side control i want to see him do something with this i don't want him to allow his opponent to get back there we go this is much better already this knee on stomach position not only does that start to push down on your opponent's stomach it starts to interrupt their breathing a little bit but it allows you to pass over to the mount position here We're looking for the reverse triangle here is back to your... I mean, the, the legs are locked here and Actually, you know, this is not something we see very often, but the position is relatively strong there. You know, because of the long legs of uh, Oracle, he's able to, uh, you know, only 10 seconds left in the round here, so probably not going to be able to do anything with it, but 
Yeah, Lochner's saying, no, I'm absolutely fine there. I mean, he's eaten a lot of strikes there in the meantime. Time! You know, we, we talk about the judging criteria, you know, damage done. Lochner looking a little bit marked off on the right-hand side of his face there. Well, I mean, he ate about 15. There we go. A shot from the other side now and a strong position into a body lock. Almost a roll through to a uh, leg lock position there. Instead, tries to go to a guard position, go scramble back up to his feet. Really nicely done, but aggressively staying on this position here. Yeah, you know, just very quickly, as we mention it, Lokrun ate a lot of shots, you know, 15, just, you know, they weren't super powerful hits, but they were hits nonetheless at the end of that first round. Both guys tussling for control here, up against the cage. Lokrun trying to dig in now create a little bit of space nice knee from the man from Toro back onto a almost a body lock and look Lock Lockman just doing such a great job of stopping his opponent from connecting the hands behind the back and then switching into a takedown of his own and again super powerful able to pick his opponent up back in the side control straight to mount now now this is much more active grappling from here he can strike his opponents grabbing around the body to try and stop that from happening and it is an effective way of closing the distance what you want to be doing from here is getting something in front and forcing your opponent to cover up because when he's covering up he can't grab you so when he's grabbing you he can't cover up when he's covering up he can't grab you so what Lockwood needs to do here is trying to get a forearm in front of the neck, trying to create some space, allow him to get some real clean shots. That will force his opponent to cover up, and then from there, you can really unleash. Nice elbows from Tina Lockwood here. Or your kill might be able to push off. I apologize, Tina is his brother, who we, uh, we briefly mentioned will be fighting tomorrow night. But great work from Kaelin Lockwood here, landing these elbows. And this is what we're talking about when we say effective gri grappling and striking he's got his man down he immediately passed him out and then the striking starts and he's putting points on the back board the here the absolutely and it's such a contrast from what he was doing in the first round which is just really interesting uh, but you know it's working for him right now you know not the shots aren't necessarily landing super well and Orakel is doing the right thing which is looking to invert and trying to use his legs but he's not having any success with it and he's starting to eat more and more of these shots the referee's having a really good look on here because these are a lot of you know they're not super clean but you're taking damage with all of these and he has the move now or this fight is going to be stopped Paul Crossley is taking a close look at this back to Oyakal trying to get out he doesn't and Kaelin Lockwood is victorious on his cage warriors debut and he's already calling for the belt side control but in the first round he just didn't do much with it in this second round immediately passes over to mount and then just did a fantastic job of controlling that position stopping any attempts to escape which there weren't a huge amount of really good attempts to escape and then just raiding down shots after shots and his opponent wasn't intelligently defending himself and that's why the fight was stopped well i'm not sure what mike grundy and colin heron said to kelly lockland between rounds but whatever it was, it worked. Came out like a completely different animal in that second frame and finished back to Oyako. Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes officially. Two minutes, 29 seconds of round number two. Referee Paul Crossley puts a halt to the bout. Your winner by TKO and still undefeated, the Don Kulik!